Hey everybody, Kevin Marks here from Fast Tracks. Sunday night, we're all still kind of buzzing from the great weekend we had with the NMRA virtual uh, convention. And I just want to give a shout out to a few people who did a fantastic job literally putting on 24 hours of straight programming. Uh, those people would be included Gordy Robinson, Martin Jenkins, Gert Muller, Jordan Kramer, Brad Anderson. They did a great job putting on that convention and it literally went 24 hours straight with no interruptions other than a few minutes between presenters. And I think they just showed the entire world what can be done and they used uh, technology that already exists. And uh, let me just adjust a few things here. So they used technology that already exists and were able to transmit it from around the world. Gordy's in Scotland on a remote island outside Scotland. Uh, Martin's down in Australia. And uh, between the two of them, they kind of flip flop back and forth. We recorded the whole uh, convention on uh, the app called Whereby, and that was done in high def. And then Martin was able to stream that app through Facebook so we could all see live. And it was recorded. And once all that gets edited, the videos that will get uploaded will actually be in more higher definition than what you already saw. So just a shout out to those guys. It was Gordy's brainchild and he's been wanting to do that for a few years and was able to pull that off. So kudos to Gordy and we look forward to the next one in May and Fast Tracks already has a clinic scheduled for that convention in May. So just want to give them a shout out and then just do a couple other little housekeeping items that we have going on. Uh, we ran a contest earlier this week to Guess how many sweepsticks we've sold in the past 10 years since we introduced them. And that's our most popular item on the website. And the winner, with a very close guess, uh, he was only off by 313, uh, is Michael Young. He guessed 28,416, and the actual number is 28,111. So Michael gets a $100 gift certificate and uh, he can use that on anything on the Fast Tracks page. So kudos to Michael and thank you for everyone who participated in that. We appreciate uh, all your support uh, that you've given us throughout the week. So what I wanna do tonight is just kinda do something a little more relaxed. This is my workshop. This is where uh, I build on my track. I'm an O-scale trolley modeler. And uh, this is where I like to spend my evening after a long day at the office. So I just kind of want to handle tonight as if you came over to my house and we were just kind of chilling and I'm going to walk everyone through how I solder and get some great results and I want to pass that along. So a couple other, uh, a couple other things I want to mention. If you like what you see, there's another Facebook group that I'm a moderator of and a, a few of the other guys are as well and they're watching too. It's called Track Modeling and Detailing and if you just type that in the Facebook search bar, Track Modeling and Detailing, that will come up. So it's a whole group of people who love detailed track and we're all into it and we love posting our work there. If you do want to join that group, there are a couple membership questions that you need to answer and they're easy. And if you aren't sure the answer, Google it. But if you don't answer the questions, we aren't going to uh, let you in. Just our way of keeping out the spam. So another uh, quick shout out that I want to do is to the a Modeler's, uh, a Modeler's Life Network, or AML Nation as we call it. So it's another group that helps support the live virtual X clinic this weekend. And if you listen to the ep any of the episodes, it's pretty entertaining and you'll, you'll find myself on there and that's put on by Lionel Strang and he does a great job keeping uh, all of us roped in and getting that out on time. So kudos to Lionel for putting that out a couple times a week. So let's get into it. So what I wanna do is just kind of show you what I did Friday but really just kind of show you my workbench, show you a couple things on the workbench. I'm not going to show you how to build a turnout. There are great videos on our YouTube channel on how to do that. I'm really what I wanna to do tonight is just show you some tips and techniques that you can uh, use to build your own track work. And everything I'm gonna show you tonight applies to soldering in general, where if you aren't doing track, it still applies to soldering photo etch parts, to doing wiring, to soldering decoders. Everything I'm gonna talk about tonight 
applies to all soldering. So even if you don't use our fixtures, even if you don't solder your own track and you want to get some tips on just how to solder properly, stick around and I think it'll be very informative. So let's kind of jump right into it, take a quick little tour. I am going to move the camera a little bit tonight. I'm going to keep that down to a minimum uh, and I'll let you know the, when that happens so no one's freaked out on anything. But I just want to kind of bring you over to the workbench, show you what I do and I'm all about safety and uh, uh, you can never take it too lightly. So over here I've got just a nice little desktop fan to blow the solder fumes away. You can get these at Target for $10 to $15. Uh, one thing that I hope I never have to use uh, down here is just a fire extinguisher. You can get a pack of these at Home Depot for under 20 bucks. They're good to have at least on every floor of your home just in case something were to happen. The other things I like too are, my, my lights back here are just regular desk lights. But what you want to do is really take care of uh, finding the right bulbs that work for you. These are 960 lumens. They are flood bulbs, so the glare is cut down. And they're also full spectrum bulbs, so I don't have too much cool light, too much soft light. And they don't reflect off the fixtures, which uh, can get a little tiresome after a little while. So find the bulbs that work best for you. I like these. The other thing that I absolutely love, and uh, sorry, you can get these uh, from Micromark. Uh, Otlight sells them. It's just a magnifying lamp. This is actually a vintage one that I found at an antique store, and I love it mainly because it can actually extend down below uh, right in front of my track work. And once I got this, things really got kicked up a notch where you can see the metal heat up, you can see the flux, you can see the actual solder flow underneath the joint and out the other side. And it's also lighted as well too. And that's a great feature to have. Everything else are just all the other tools that we've talked about, flush cutting nippers, files, tweezers. Uh, I've got a Weller iron over on this side, but then tonight I'm gonna be using my American Beauty resistance iron. So I'm an O-scale modeler. Uh, I, Love trolley cars, so I've got some nice, uh, some nice models up here that uh, will one day be running on the layout up here real soon. So that'll be another video, so stick around for that. So let me just move my cords here a little bit. Again, we're going to keep this casual. I just want to show you what I do, which may be a little different from what you've seen before, but I can definitely assure you that all of these things work. So... Uh, what I started doing whenever we do shows and you know, you'll see fast tracks at the national train show. I've been there a couple times. We do train fast in Milwaukee, been there five years now. And then also at the O scale show in Chicago. So what I like to do whenever people tell me that they aren't any good at soldering or they're scared to do it, or they don't want to start. I, I just call that nonsense. And what I like to do is just say, I'm going to show you what to do watch me and then come around the side of the booth and sit here and I'm going to walk you through it. Yes, Sean, I'm talking to you. Sean was the last person I did this with in Chicago at the O scale show last month, right before all this COVID-19 stuff started going on. So, uh, I got him, uh, behind the bench and showed him what I'm going to show you tonight. So, uh, before we start, uh, the other thing I like to do, and I'm not going to do this in front of you, but I'm going to at least put these nitrile gloves on so that way the oils from my fingers will stay off of what we're going to do. So whenever you solder, think about soldering like painting where everything has to be absolutely clean. If it's not clean, don't do it. And if you don't want to watch anymore, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you two things. And here's the tough love that's coming tonight. You knew it was coming. So you have to remember these couple things. First is if it's not shiny, don't solder it. That means it's not clean. Whatever material it is, brass, nickel, silver, if it's not shiny, if it is oxidation, if it's dirty, if oils are on it, don't do it. And I'm going to show you what you can do to fix that. The other thing that you want to do is make sure you have enough heat. 
and make sure your soldering iron is strong enough to solder what you're gonna do. 40 watt irons work great for N and HL scale, but once you get into the big stuff like 125 and 148, you need a little more power. Tonight we're gonna to be soldering code 125, and uh, I'll have my iron dialed in at 85 watts, and that's enough to make quick work of what we're gonna do. So the second thing that you need to remember is, and this is soldering 101, this isn't anything uh, that I've made up or, um, you know, is specific just to soldering track on fixtures, is whenever you solder, you want to apply the heat to one side, the material in the middle, and then apply the solder to the material. You want the material to actually melt the solder and form the joint. That way you know that you have a good strong joint. And when you have a strong joint, it's clean, it's shiny, it looks good, and it's flat. So if you don't have that, if your joint is cloudy, if it uh, is rough and it's kind of globbed up and coarse, uh, a couple things happen. Either you didn't have enough heat, you didn't clean it well enough, or it's a combination of both. So I'm going to show you what I do tonight. It's a little not on the extreme side, but I want to make sure that everything is clean. And I, can, I can't even tell you the last time I had a co uh, cold solder joint. And this is live, there's no surprises here. So I'm pretty confident things will go as planned, but if they don't, which sometimes happens, I'm also gonna show you how to fix it because that's just life and you need to know what's gonna happen with plan B when something doesn't go as planned. So don't stress out over it. The great thing about building track work is if something doesn't go as planned, just scrap it and redo it. Sometimes it's better to just do that and start over than it is to uh, try to fix what you have. So what we're going to do tonight is just practice soldering in a fixture first. And I have that on the bench, so I'm going to move the camera in a second. And then after that, we're going to go back over to the bench and use some of our tools. And we're going to use the sweep sticks, the rail roller, uh, and then our new three-point track gauges that came out just a few months ago. And we're actually going to solder some track that is not in fixtures. So if you want to solder your own track and hand lay your own track, you can do that as well. And you don't need fixtures to do it, but having these tools will definitely do it. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to show you how to solder. And if you do like what you see, just go to our website, Google Fast Tracks, or just type in handlaytrack.com. And up on the top right of the website, there are YouTube videos that explain all of this in a lot more detail. And you can just go there, watch it, and see if that's something that you want to do. But for tonight, I just want to get out some concepts on clean soldering because if you're a model railroader, eventually you're going to have to learn to solder. And, you know, again, I just want this to be casual as if you're just kind of coming over to my house and you know we're gonna run through this. So I'm gonna move the camera now, or actually I'm gonna talk about a couple other things first and then we'll move the camera. So the other thing I wanna stress when you're gathering all of your components, you know, here's some rail. We also have these PC board ties that you can use if you want. And the thing I wanna stress with this is just because it's new doesn't mean it's clean. So I actually, uh, clean these off Friday night before the clinic for the NMRA Virtual X convention and I was amazed I just did a little touch up on a few of them just to test the equipment before we started and I was amazed at the oxidation that happened even in those 48 hours even though they were just cleaned. So remember flux is just meant to take off surface oxidation is not meant to clean everything completely. So you want to clean everything first. So when you get your rail, and I've had a pack here for literally four years, it's still new, but it's been sitting here. So when rail is made, it actually starts out as a square and it's pulled through a die and a lubricant is added to that die so they can pull it through. And obviously the lubricants are still on the rail. And if you look at the rail, it's cloudy, there's oxidation, it is not clean. So you wanna clean that ahead of time. So what I like to do is, I've got my Dremel tool right here, is just use one of these carbon steel wheels and I have the package right here. It's the three quarter inch carbon steel brushes 
that you can get any place that sells Dremel tools. I like the carbon steel better than the brass because it just holds up a little bit longer. I can tell you before you use those, you definitely want to use some eye protection, get some safety glasses. I, these are actually prescription safety glasses that I got from my eye doctor. They really weren't that much, but wow, they make a difference. And I had my prescription adjusted. So these are actually made for close up work where the glasses I'm wearing now are more for general use and they're progressive. So I have to look like right now I'm looking at you through the top of my glasses where at least with these, I can look straight on with what I'm doing. So we're gonna switch over to those in a little bit. So what I like to do is wire wheel the rail before I even start. So the 18 inch length or the three foot lengths, just take that wheel and run it over everything, flip it over, do it again, and then do the bottom as well too. Literally takes a minute to do it and you'll notice how nice and shiny everything is. And you can actually see the rail better as you're putting your track work together. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'll do is I'll start that first and I'll cut all my components first and then I'll take a break and then I come back and actually do the soldering. And I do that for a couple reasons. One, you never want to rush soldering. And when I find out that I make a mistake, a lot of times I'm just trying to rush. I want to get done for the night or I have a deadline I need to meet or I need to go somewhere. Don't do that. When you're ready to start soldering, try to get rid of all the distractions and you know just sit and focus on what you're doing and everything will be okay and just just like we did for soldering uh i'm, I'm sorry for cleaning off the rail we're going to clean off the ties as well too so when you get ties from us they come in frets like this and what i like about these is they're milled so they're nice and flat Whenever you get any copper ties that are sheared, there's a lip on one side and then you have to basically file that off, which is an extra step. But with ours, since they're, they're milled, they're nice and flat and all you need to do is just snip them off, clean up the end with a file uh, where you snipped it and then go over it with some sandpaper. So I'm gonna change the camera angle a little bit and show you what I'm actually working on uh, right here. So we're just gonna reposition things a little bit so we get everything in the frame and make sure that you can see everything. So there we go. That works. So the other thing I like to do before I start is whenever you put rail in a fixture and what we're going to do tonight is actually make some straight track in a turnout fixture. So just because it's a turnout fixture doesn't mean you only have to make turnouts. You can also make straight track in this as well. So anytime rail goes in the fixture, what I like to do first is make sure everything fits without any ties in it. Then what I'll do is I'll take the tweezers and I like these tweezers with, with the ends like that because then I can just grab this and I just like to make sure that nothing is, is catching inside the fixture. If it's catching, that means there's a little burr on it, or you didn't file it quite right, or the rail isn't straight, and something is going to happen. And when you solder it, your track might not actually be engaged. So you just want to move that rail back a little bit. You can hear it, and you'll be able to tell if something isn't correct. So once you have that, we need to put the ties in. So again, like what I said, I like to get everything ready and then right before I start, I'm going to uh, hit everything with sandpaper again. So what we're gonna do next is just put the tie down and all I'm using is some 3M 400 grit sandpaper. And what I like about this is that it not only cleans the oxidation off of the ties, it actually etches the copper a little bit as well too. So I'm gonna do other videos where I'm basically doing the same thing because we're streaming live on Facebook. Uh, we only have 480p resolution. So I've got a 4K camera sitting right next to me so we can get some good tight shots so you can actually see the difference between ties that were new and then ties that had a little oxidation. 
So I have my gloves on, I've got my safety glasses on. The last thing you wanna do is have something shoot up in your eye. I'm not thrilled with how I did that one, so let's just redo that one again, get those last little bits off. You're always better to make sure everything is perfect as you're going in here. So we're just gonna quick clean everything off right here. Do it again and again. Remember what I said, rule number one is if it's not shiny, don't solder it. So we're making sure that everything is absolutely shiny as we go along. So all of these are looking good. The ties are super shiny and we're just gonna throw those in the fixture. So then once we're done with the ties, even though I wire wheeled this right before the video starts, I'm going to do the same thing on the base of the rail. I have the rail upside down on my wood block here. And even after wire wheeling it, I'm still amazed at how much stuff is coming off on the sandpaper. And all of this will lead to better solder joints. So the other thing that I do, and here's a little extra step, is when I'm done with this, I want to take the rail, put it in the sandpaper, and I'm just going to do the, the, the sides on the base of the rail. And I wanna make sure that that is etched as well too and clean because I want the solder to flow underneath one side of the joint and onto the other side and grab that base of the rail. So now I'm gonna do the other piece of rail right now. And again, this just takes a second. One of the things I hear people sometimes bragging about is how quickly they can build a turnout. And I'm here to tell you, don't worry about how quickly it takes you to build a turnout. Worry about making sure that everything is done properly so you get a good quality turnout that will give you years of operation. And again, I'm amazed at how much is still coming off. And you can kind of see if I can pick that up, you can kind of see just how much is actually coming off right here. So now that everything is nice and clean and shiny, we're going to apply some flux. And we're gonna talk about flux in just a second. Let's put that back. Get this back in the frame right here. So the, the flux that we sell on the site is something we actually uh, source ourselves and that's acid-based flux where it's harder to find that in stores these days. So we actually have a source and have it made for us. This container is, I want to say eight years old and you can see how much I've used and I've built a lot of track since then. So you never want to you never want to have flux clean everything off the joint. You want to get it as clean as possible and then have the flux just take any other surface oxidation off that you might have. So what we're going to do next is now that the, the rail is in place, I'm going to apply some flux where the rail is going to cross the ties. So that just takes a second. We're just gonna go back and you can see where the rail crosses each of the ties, where the groove is. So we're just going to throw some flux on here. That's pretty standard. Almost done, one more tie to go. And if you put, get a little too much on, you can always wipe it off with a paper towel and that'll be fine. So now that the flux is on the ties, we are going to just put the rail on just like this and do that on, on the other side. And then from this point, what I like to do is add a little bit of weight. And if you have one of our point forms, you can just throw that on there and that'll keep everything from moving around. So once we do that, what we're gonna do next is just put a little swipe of flux on each side of the base of the rail on the tie. And when we solder, we're only gonna solder on one side and then the solder will flow to the other side. So there's no need to solder both sides of the rail when you do it with this method. So this just takes a second. I'm not sure if this is an extra step but I found this extremely helpful. 
So thanks everybody for being on tonight. I can see comments flowing on my phone. I recognize a lot of the names. I appreciate it. And I know you've watched a lot of train videos this weekend and I thank you for tuning in one more time tonight. So this will be posted on the Fast Tracks Facebook page. So when we're done, you can actually share it. If you have a page for your group, you can share this with your members as well. So we just put flux on both sides of the rail. We're gonna close up the flux. No need to put your finger in it by any other time. I like a lot of weight when I solder, so we're gonna add a couple more of these to it. Um, there's a reason for that. With a resistant soldering iron, I can still hold the iron on and take the heat off and that will hold it in place. But if you do use a regular, uh, I'm gonna flip the camera up here a little bit. So if you do use a regular Weller iron, make sure you have a nice narrow tip and you don't want your tip wider than the tie pockets. So that way, you know, all that heat is going directly on the rail. So if you use this type of iron, having the weight on the rails will actually keep the rails from lifting up as you pull the iron up. And you don't want to do that when you're soldering. So have some weight on it and let's get to it. I've talked enough, let's see some action. So because we've done all the prep work first, this is going to go very quickly. And I'm using an American Beauty 100 watt resistant soldering iron. And because it's a single electrode, which looks like this, I need to attach another piece to complete the circuit. With resistant soldering, it's basically one big electrical loop. And when that circuit gets interrupted, it creates resistance and heat. But again, you don't need to do this for the smaller scales, but if you do solder 125 and code 148, that definitely uh, is a big plus. So I'm going to attach the other side of the electrode to uh, one part of the rail. So moving the camera back up again, here are my safety glasses. So one of the things that I like to do when I solder is you never put, and I'm gonna hold this over my black shirt so you can actually see it, you never wanna put the solder straight onto the joint because that joint will suck up as much solder as you can apply to it. What I like to do is actually move it from side to side across the joint. That way I can actually control the amount of solder that's going on. And if you have everything clean and with a lot of heat, it does not take a lot of solder. So don't think that you need to have huge solder globs to get a strong joint, you don't. A lot of times when you have those solder globs, I would actually question how strong that joint is because if your joint was actually hot enough, that solder would have flowed down underneath the joint and come out the other side and it would have been a whole lot flatter. So if you're getting solder bubbles, uh, something isn't right. So let's get back to this and let's fire up this bad boy. So on a resistance iron, and I'll just move the camera a little bit right here. Here is the unit that I have. And underneath my desk, I've got a foot pedal that will turn it on and off. So I can turn the heat uh, on and off as I need it. So let's, uh, let's fire this up and start. So the other point I wanna make is you want soldering to be comfortable, no different than painting. You want painting to be comfortable. So I like to solder on the side of the rail that is facing me. You know, you don't want to have to go like this to solder because that is an unnatural action. You want it to be as natural as possible. And all we're going to do is take the solder and move it across the joint. So I'm going to put the iron on one side of the joint, test my iron here and it's going on. So I'm going to put the iron on one side and right now I apply the heat. I don't know if you saw that little spark or not and the joint heats up very quickly. There's a little bit of smoke, and all I'm gonna do is touch the iron, or I'm sorry, touch the solder to that joint, and that's it. I took the power off, and that's it. There's no, there's no big secret. So, I don't know if you can see, this is the side that I soldered, and you can actually see how the solder came underneath the rail and came out the other side. And that's it. There's no huge solder globs. 
there's nothing, there's literally nothing to clean up. And once that gets hit with paint, you won't even be able to tell that that was actually soldered. So that's how clean and how easy it is to solder track. So let's just do up a couple more here. And you see a little bit of the, the smoke from the, the flux sizzling. And I'm just going to literally just touch it. And that's it. There's, you don't have to keep adding solder on. The other advantage of what we did by uh, by sanding the ties ahead of time is we actually etch the copper on the PC ties. And the solder actually will, uh, I don't know if you can hear that little buzz, that's the, uh, the iron. The solder will actually settle into those grooves and actually give you a little better bite on your joint. So even though there's not a whole lot of solder, uh, you actually get really, really strong track. So we're just going to do the last one real quick here. And I just need to readjust my solder. So what you want to do so you can see it is have it nice and straight. So let's try this again. Keep it nice and easy. We're going to heat this up. And that's it. We just did four solder joints on one side of the track. So now what we're gonna do is flip it around and we're going to do the other side. Again, because you should only solder the joints that are closest to you. So we're gonna do the same thing again. Apply the, uh, the electrode right here. Get my solder ready to go. And again, you can see how it's nice and straight. Hold the iron on the rail there's no need to hold the iron on the tie because by the time you get the rail heated up, especially code 125, that tie is already at the proper temperature. And we're just gonna put a tiny bit on, that's it. There's nothing more. We're just gonna do this side real quick. You can see the smoke, let it heat up. And we're just gonna touch it. I twitched right there for a little bit, so we're going to do it again, and that's it. The joints are coming out nice and clean, nice and smooth, and everything is looking really good. So we're going to do this one again, not again, but for the first time. That's perfect right there, and we're going to slide this down, and we're going to do the last one. And again, this is code 125 rail. That's it. You saw how, how quick I put that solder on and we're done. So let's put the soldering iron someplace that it's not going to burn me or start something on fire, hence the fire extinguisher. And I'm just going to put the camera back up here and pull this out and look at what we just did. Literally in maybe a minute on each side and that's how quick and easy. So I'll try to get the camera in so you can see if you look at, at this one, the light's pretty good. I'll try to not wiggle and it's a pretty good joint and they're all nice and clean. There's literally no cleanup to do. And when you get everything clean and you have proper heat, that's how easy soldering is. It's really not that big of a deal. So if you're worried, if you have a fixture and you haven't started, or if you aren't having the best success with your soldering, just take some scraps. Everyone needs straight track for their layout and just practice with the joints on some straight track and you know master that. And then once you get that done, you uh, can move on to other things on the turnout. And if you wanna see how turnouts are made, go to the YouTube channel. There are plenty of places that, um, that will show you and our YouTube channel will walk you through all the steps of a turnout. So that's soldering in a fixture. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solder without fixtures. And after you do that for a little bit, sometimes it gets a little unnerving because you're so used to soldering in a fixture. So if you don't have our fixtures, I'm going to show you some track building tools that you can use 
and you can solder your track freehand and the results will be exactly the same. So we're just gonna move things around a little bit here and bring over this board and we're basically, I'm gonna show you a couple tools that we have to offer and then uh, we're actually gonna solder some track with our track gauges. So I mentioned before, if it's not shiny, don't solder it. So if you're building your track and you have to come back to it and it's oxidized, uh, what can you do? You can use 400 grit sandpaper. You can get this at uh, hardware stores, hobby shops. The other thing that I found that's useful is this is called a spot sanding pen. And I got this at an auto body supply store. And basically it's fiberglass bristles that you can use and get in some tight corners and you can use to uh, scrape off some oxidation. And this works extremely well if you can't quite get track work uh, or you can't quite get sandpaper in the area that you wanna clean. So uh, again, that's called a spot sanding pen and it's just little fiberglass uh, pieces that uh, you can brush on. And then make sure that you brush those pieces off. You don't want that uh, in your work. So a couple of the other tools that we're going to use uh, on this next part is a rail roller. So this is used for bending rail. And uh, we also make these products called sweep sticks. So you can use this to lay out track work and I'm going to show you how to do it. So these ends are standardized so you can actually put uh, different radius of radiuses of these together and you can also put together a straight track and you can actually lay track work out. So what I like to do is I have a library in multiple sizes of these. They're on the website, they come in a ton of sizes. And when I have an idea in my head, I'll come up here and lay it out on the floor and I can have something laid out in 15, 20 minutes where uh, that long trying to do it on the computer, I'm just getting the program going and I can already be done. So we're gonna show you how to use those. And then we make this other product called a trifecta track gauge, which looks like this, looks like that on the side. So these are actually machine track gauges. We make these in all the sizes, all the scales. Everybody should have these, and I can't recommend these enough. They uh, make handling track so much easier. And then if you have existing track, these are so precise because they're machined. They are not molded. They're actually machined in house. Uh, I'll take these and I'll run these along my track work and either look for tight spots or loose spots and then you know you need to go back and make an adjustment. And if you do that on all of your track, uh, you can eliminate some possible derailments. The other little feature we added on here is, and I'll try to do this in front of my shirt so it's black, you can see how it's straight right here. That's actually the center line of your track work and I'm gonna show you how you can line that up with the sweep sticks. So again, there's less talking, more action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you this rail roller and I kind of pre-bent these to the right size, which is a 15 inch radius, which for code 125 is a pretty, see, that's why you wear safety glasses. I almost whacked my eye right there. So 15 inch radius for O scale is pretty tight. So when you put these in, you can adjust it here and then pull the rail through here to get that radius. And once you do that a couple times, you wanna keep gradually adjusting it until you get to the proper radius. The other thing you can do is while they're still in the rail roller, you can actually take your sweep stick and you can actually put that right up next to it in inside the web of the rail and you can actually make sure that what you did on the rail roller is actually lining up with your sweep stick. So that's how you know that you are at the proper radius. So what we're gonna do uh, next, and I've already pre-bent this, you wanna take the tension out of the rail before you start soldering. So you never want to bend the rail in place and then solder it down where there's tension on that joint and eventually it's going to pop. So these, and I'm gonna move the camera down, down now, is uh, what we're looking at. So let's say you wanna lay some curved track 
Here's your workbench. We're going to hook a couple of these sweep sticks together. So on these sweep sticks, you'll see the notches in the middle. There's your center line. And then the notches on the side right here, if you want to do some hand spiking, you can hand spike one side of the rail down. So if you wanted to do that, you just lay your sweep sticks out. There would be ties down here normally. And you can lay your rail right up next to it. This, the rail fits right inside the sweep sticks. And then if you wanted to, you could hand spike through these little gaps right down here. So we're gonna solder tonight because we're talking about soldering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to mark some of these center lines through here. And again, you can use these as you lay out your ties and I'll show you what you do in a second. So we're gonna just go through, mark the center line on everything. And then I'm just gonna mark the outside a little bit just so I can kind of gauge where my ties are going to go. So super easy literally taking a minute to do this and you'll have a good idea of where to lay everything out. So now that that's done, everything is marked, I can move these away. So I already uh, got my ties ready, but we're going to sand one more time, get any surface oxidation off, and we're just going to uh, lay these out in place. And what I like to do, because this is a demo, I don't want things to move, I'm just gonna use a little bit of painter's tape just to hold everything down in place. And just lining up everything where it needs to go. So if you were handling track on wood ties, those wood ties would already be glued down to the road bed. But if you want to build this in place on your workbench, like what we're doing now, painter's tape will kind of hold everything in place and make it a lot less frustrating for you. So yes, I did already cut these strips and we're just going to put these down. Just a couple more. That one needs a little bit of work. We'll clean that one up as well. Looks good. And we're gonna do one more. And again, I just don't like things moving when I solder. When things move, that's how you get cold solder joints. So there we go. So we laid our ties down. Give that one a quick little, quick little sand. And then what I'm gonna do next is just clean up the bottom of the rail. I already wire wheeled it earlier, but we want it to be nice and clean and shiny. Then I'm gonna do the base of the rail, kind of pull that through on the sandpaper, and then do the other side. So you can tell if your rail is bent properly uh, when you can move it on the desktop and the surfaces are flat. Sometimes when you try to hand bend rail, you have to be careful that you don't torque the rail which then will uh, make your track out of gauge. So we're gonna get the bottom of this rail nice and shiny. And this is an extra step. I like doing it, and I found that whenever I do it, I don't have issues. So hopefully there won't be any issues when we do this tonight. So then what we're gonna do, because I marked the outer lines move this back a little bit. Because I marked these outer lines, I basically know the rail is going to go right about here. So what I'm gonna do next is put some flux on the rail, I'm sorry, on the tie, and then we're gonna use our trifecta three-point track gauges to hold everything in place while we do it. So I'm just gonna touch everything again, no different than what I did within the fixture. Just hit each tie real quick with some flux. Try to be neat, but you don't have to be super neat. Almost there. So now that we did that step, 
we're going to put the rail on the ties just like this. And then we're going to take our three point track gauges and we're going to use those to line up the other side of the rail. We'll put that on here. So then what I like to do is if you buy any of these, I recommend you buy at least three. So that way you can have one going to one direction and then the other two that are over here can go the other direction. And that will hold everything in place really, really well. So once these track gauges are on here, you can actually see they move really easy. The rail is engaged. I can actually grab a truck, take this truck, and that one popped off. Let's put that one back on, grab that truck, and actually put the truck on, and the truck will, that one wasn't quite there, and the truck is running just fine. So this is where weight comes in as well, just like what we were doing on the fixture where let's grab some of, oops, sorry, let's grab some of our point forms, put those down. I'm gonna throw a couple other ties down here just to support the ends, even though we aren't going to, we aren't going to solder those. And then I'm just gonna add another point form down here at the end just to make sure everything is held in place. So now that we have a little bit of weight on the rails, we're gonna add a couple more. Again, I don't like things to move. Moving is bad when you're soldering. You want everything to stay where it is. So now I'm just going to apply some flux to the outside of the base of the rail just like what we did in the fixture. And we're just gonna go down, do that on each side, super easy. You don't need a whole lot of flux when you're soldering, just like painting, less is more. So one last little dab, and then we'll be ready to start. So we're going to close up the flux. And if you do find you make a mistake or you have a little too much flux, I like these. It's called Super Wick. And basically it's a copper braided cord with some flux in it. And that will clean up anything that uh, you may need to be cleaned up. So one last check. We're going to make sure our track gauges are on the track properly. And then what we're going to do is attach the electrode to one side again, and we're just going to do what we did with the fixture and just go right down the line and solder. So let's make sure I have a good connection with my iron. That's looking good. The flux is starting to sizzle, and we're just going to apply a little bit of solder, just like that, take the heat off, and then move to the next one. And I am just literally swiping this just a tiny little bit. And you can see how fast we can just go right down the line here. Let that heat up. My hands are shaking a little bit. That one's pretty good. We're going to move on to this side. Let me adjust the cord here. And we're just going to go right down the line. So you can now see that my prep work that I did, cleaning everything, weighting everything down, taping it down, is now paying off. Because when I'm actually starting to solder, things are going extremely fast and there are no issues at all with anything shifting. Just a little bit more on that one. Perfect. So now we're going to go back and do the inside of the rail on the other side. So we're just going to repeat the process. And remember, you put the heat on one side and then we're just going to let it heat up, swipe the solder, 
and it's actually flowing underneath the rail and it's coming out the other side and that's exactly what we want. So we're just moving right along and you can see how nice and easy this is going. Every joint is coming out extremely well. I'm pleased so far. Let's adjust the solder. Keep moving and then we'll take everything off and I'll show you how good this looks. It's pretty sweet. I'm extremely satisfied with how this is turning out. And you can see nothing was difficult, but if you do all the steps ahead of time, soldering is just the last part of it and literally just takes a second. So we're now moving on to the last joint and you can see how quickly we've actually worked through all of this and have done this piece of track. You always have to be careful on the last one. You're always excited to finish it. So you want to make sure that it turns out perfect. There we go. We're going to turn the iron off. Make sure everything is okay. Take everything off. Take these off. Take this off. And now we're going to take our truck. And we're just going to... listen to it there's no binding oh man that's pretty sweet so that's how easy it is to solder track using these trifecta track gauges that are on the website so let's pull this apart so you can take a little closer look to it and just show you the results of what we did so i appreciate everybody sticking around we're going to wrap this up in just a minute it's been a whole lot of fun showing you how to get some really good solder joints. And it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be difficult. It was actually pretty easy as what you saw. And I hope you learned something tonight. So remember, if it's not shiny, don't solder it and always apply the heat to one side and apply solder to the other side. So here we go. Here is our work that we literally did in minutes. So you can see just how nice and clean and shiny, actually, let me go like that, actually this way, you can see just how nice and clean and shiny those joints are. So the other thing that you wanna remember, whenever you use acid-based flux, you need to clean it off. I'm gonna move the camera here. So whenever you use acid-based flux, actually any flux, whenever you're done, you can take it downstairs. I save all my old toothbrushes and I use those with some Dawn dish soap to clean off the track. Give it a good scrub because if you don't clean the flux off, eventually that's going to corrode and can lead to uh, some electrical issues which no one wants to have. So that's it. Look at what we did literally in minutes. That's pretty sweet. I'm going to be able to use this on a module that I'm working on now. So Soldering 101, there you go. So remember, don't solder unless everything is shiny and clean. Apply the solder to one side and the heat on the other side and just go slow, take it easy, don't rush, and you'll be just fine. So I see there's a ton of comments here. I can't actually read them all while I'm going through this, but I'll go through them when we're done. But thanks a lot for joining me upstairs in the workshop and uh, you're going to see some other great videos coming out. So if you want to see more, just go to the Fast Tracks website, which is handlaytrack.com. And up on the upper right, there's a button for YouTube so you can see everything. If you have any questions, you can email us. You can actually call us. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see how to do that. A real live person will actually respond to you. And that site is monitored uh, 20, not 24 seven, but seven days a week. Uh, during business hours. So if you do have a question, shoot us a note. If you aren't sure what you need or what to do, give us a call. We'll walk you through it. We do it all day long. This is what we do. So thanks again. Be sure to check out Track Modeling and Detailing and also a Modeler's Life podcast. We appreciate it and enjoy your night, everybody. And we'll see you real soon.